This is section 4.2. We're wondering what are solutions to equations and then also how do I make a table and graph of an equation. We're going to actually focus mostly on just making the table of the equation. Um, but to make the table of the equation it's really important that we understand what a solution is to an equation because a table is really just a set of solutions. So a solution of an equation in two variables, when we have an x and a y or an a and a b or a, any other two-letter combination. A solution to an equation is an ordered pair that makes the equation true. By the way, if there are two variables, there are an infinite number of solutions if a solution exists. So a graph of an equation is in x and y is the set of all points x and y that are solutions to the equation. Before we worry about a set of solutions, let's just identify if something is, if one coordinate pair is a solution or not. So here we're wondering in this equation is 2 comma 6, x is 2, y is 6, is that a solution to this equation? So we'll substitute in 6 for y and 2 for x. And we'll simplify this left side. What does this equal? Use your order of operations. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. Does 7 equal 6? Question mark. No. So no, 2 comma 6 is not a solution. It would not show up on our table, and it would not be on the line of the graph of this is 4, 2 a solution to this equation? So let's plug in 4 for x and 2 for y. Now you can just use your calculator if you're using one of my calculators or any calculator that knows the order of operations. You should get 20 because 12 plus 8 is 20. Does 20 equal 20? Is this true? Yes. So yes. 4 comma 2 is a solution. I like to do a double exclamation point with a smiley face because I'm always excited when something is a solution. So now we're going to move on and create a few solutions. Now there's a way to make this a little bit easier so there's a pattern and you can kind of catch little mistakes if you make them. Uh, to do that, to make a table, we set up an XY chart with three columns. The first column is your X's. The middle column is going to be a little bit of work, and the last column is going to be your y. Now when we put our x and y together, we get a coordinate pair. Now some general rules. I want you to choose at least three values for x. I'd suggest a negative, a zero, and a positive. And I'd also strongly recommend that you make these numbers right here opposites. So if you choose for your negative, negative 3, I'd recommend that you choose positive 3 for your positive. And then in between those, you would have 0. Graph your points. You may use a ruler or fold a piece of paper to make your line accurately straight. Although, I'd actually cross that out. I'm going to challenge you to freehand it as best you can. If it is squiggly, it is okay. I understand that, you know, that a line technically is really straight. You're going to see a geometry. You're going to get challenged to draw lines and if you every single line that you make you use a ruler for you're gonna spend a lot of time doing that your geometry teachers will also understand that it lines your line when you make it is not gonna be perfectly straight but the more you practice the better you get hopefully by the time you're in geometry you can make some pretty sweet straight lines so you can draw some awesome figures and not have to use a ruler every time uh, another big point here that is important I know I just crossed off part of this one is to draw arrows on both ends of your line to show that there are infinite solutions. They keep on going forever and ever. So here we go. Let's pick an x value. I'm going to choose negative 4, actually. So then I'm going to substitute in negative 4 in place of x. So I'm going to write, so really to figure out what y is, I have to take x minus 3. So I'm going to take negative 4 minus 3, and I get negative 7. You can just use a calculator here. So negative 4 comma negative 7 is one solution to this equation. It's one point on my line. So let's see here. Choose at least three values. A negative, a 0. So now I'm going to try 0. I'm going to plug 0 in for x. 0 is awesome to work with. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. 
when x is 0, y is negative 3. That's another coordinate pair or another solution to this equation. It'll be a point on my line. Lastly, choose a negative, a 0, and a positive. I haven't chosen a positive yet, and according to what Mr. P said a couple minutes ago, I should choose the opposite of this negative. The opposite of negative 4 is positive 4. So now I go 4, and I substitute that in for x, so I go 4 minus 3, that's 1. When x is 4, y is 1. If you choose opposites, and you put 0 in the middle, what we're going to be working with for the next couple months is linear functions. That means that the graph should be a straight line. If you see a pattern here, we're increasing these by 4, you should see a pattern, maybe not the same increase, but you should see a pattern here. To go from negative 7 to negative 3, we increase by 4. To go from negative 3 to 1, we increase by 4. There is a pattern. If there's a pattern here, there should be a pattern here. So let's plot these points. Negative 4 means left 4. Negative 7 means down 7. So that first point is right there. 0, negative 3, don't go left or right. Just stay right there, but then go down 3 for the negative 3 on the y. And then 4, 1. Go right 4, up 1. And then try to sketch a straightish line that's good enough through there. Put arrows on it because it does go for an ever, ever and ever. I could put 1,000 in here, and I would get 997. That is a solution to this line. It's way up here, and I'm not going to make a huge graph to show that. That's why we put arrows on it. it. It takes away, or it tells people that you know that that graph goes forever and ever, and there's a point like this on that graph that is also a solution. Let's try it again. What do you want for an x? Let's pick a negative. I heard you say negative 2. That's a good number to pick. And then we'd also pick a 0. And then we'd pick a positive that would be opposite of negative 2. Opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. What we did here is we made a pattern. We're increasing by 2 every time. Now you should see a pattern over here for your y values. It won't always be increasing by 2, but it should be a pattern. Whatever it takes me to go from here to there, say I have to add 10, then I should have to add 10 to go from here to here if I'm doing my algebra correctly and I chose a linear pattern right there. So here we go. Substitute in negative 2 in place of x. So 2 times negative 2 plus 3. Crunch the numbers using the order of operations or use your calculator. You should get negative 1. I encourage you to do that in your head and then double check it on a calculator. And then we go 2 times 0 plus 3. Now if you're using my calculator, you can arrow up right now after you hit equals and you got your negative 1. Arrow up and it should show this and you can just arrow over and change the negative 2 to a 0. So we get 3 here and then we substitute in 2 for x. So 2 times 2 plus 3, you get 7. So here's where we look for a pattern. When I go from negative 1 to 3, I have to add 4. When I go from 3 to 7, what do we have to add? Whew. We have to add 4. So here's my three coordinate pairs that I'm going to plot. Should make a straight line. If you have a pattern here and a pattern here, and these don't make a straight line, then you made a, a goof with your graph. So negative 2, negative 1, where is that? Go left 2 and then down 1. 0, 3, don't go left or right, go uh, up 3. And then 2, 7. Go right 2, up 7. Does that make a straight line? You betcha. Zing that line, put arrows on it. Now I notice I missed my dot. That's not a big deal. Just make sure the dot is obvious. I see that you know it should go through there. We're all human. It's, uh, that's where I'm encouraging you just to freehand it. Try to do a good job. Take your time. But I'm not going to be really picky on this stuff, on, on you making a straight line. This stuff I am going to be picky on and that you have three correct points, not the straightness of your line. That's not a picky part. Bum, bum, bum. We're going to talk about those in the future. Okay, so that was solutions and making a table.